Welcome guys, I am super excited for our very first interview podcast to introduce to you New York Times best-selling author of eight books, 13 business programs, currently has a property portfolio worth $1.2 billion, has founded up to 14 companies now and growing still. Mr. 10X himself, my uncle G, Grant Cardone. Love you guys. Love you guys. Thank you for your so, so glad about my, I'm so excited to see you again and, and uh, just really have a big affinity for both of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Um, and let, let me just say, like, like you guys are like, with all the stuff that we do, and, and you know, I, I heard somebody say once, well, the, if the guy has all that, why is he, why is he doing podcasts? And why is he doing, you know, why would somebody do that, right? But, but I got to tell you, like, you guys have been to our boot camp, you've been to the 10X Growth Conference. The more I see people that are connected with what we're doing, the more I get a sense of family. And the, the one thing money can't buy, money can buy happiness. Uh, I, I know it can, you know, I mean, unless you're just unhappy, but, and you don't know what you want, but, but you can buy it, but it can't, it can't buy friends and it can't buy family. Absolutely. And, and, you know, some of us were blessed to have big families and some of us didn't have that. I didn't, I didn't have a big family and, and what we all end up with though is smaller families, unfortunately. And so the part of, part of the thing about me doing this and meeting you guys and having events and conferences is we get to expand our family and the travel's about us expanding our family. So I consider you guys to be part of my family. Appreciate that, appreciate that. It means everything to us. And it's funny, right? Because I've, I've met a lot of people and they say, you know, like you, you, you spend so much money on this guy and you keep going to every event and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, when you choose a mentor, there's no point in really not listening to them, right? So one of the things you always taught us was show up, keep showing up, try to get inve uh, attention, invest the money, mm -hmm. pay to get the access. So. It was my goal to always meet you and for you to know who I am. So I was like, well, I've got to use his teachings, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that's what we did. And now here we are today, which is a testament to what you teach, yeah. you know, and, and it does work. It does absolutely work. Speaking of events, 10X World Tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you finding? You've gone to a lot of places, met a lot of people. We've been nine countries now. We did. We started out in Rome. We did a gig in Rome. Did a, uh, went there. Went to Bucharest. That was fantastic. Forty-five hundred people in Bucharest. The people were amazing there. I thought they were going to be much tighter. Um, left there. Went to Dubai. Added that. Uh, had a lot of interest, both in Cardone Capital, a conference there. I think I'm going back there in November. Actually, to do two conferences. Uh, left there, went to Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, uh, most of these places you've been. We were trying to add the Philippines. We just couldn't figure out how to work it out. Met the prince of, uh, where, where was this? Uh, Cambodia. Cambodia. He's second, no, first in line to the king. Learned so much in this trip. It's just like mind-boggling what I've learned that, that I didn't know. I didn't even know to ask. So... Um, I think we went to Malaysia. I finished Malaysia, did Maldives, Maldives, and then went to. We've been a lot. Mykonos. Mykonos. <laughs> I'm following the Greek dude. Every one of these places I go to, I got off the plane in Dubai, and I was like, "Oh my God!" I could feel this, like this. I belong here. Then I fly into Greece. I'm like, "No, no, this. <laughs> these are my people." I go to Thailand, and I'm like. I just need a scooter <laughs> with seven people on it, right? So, so it's like everywhere I went, I felt some kind of connection. I come to the country here uh, in, um, in England, right, in New Hampshire, and I was like, oh, my God, I forgot that I, you know, I've always wanted to live on a big piece of land where there's birds and animal, and, you know, so all of this just connects me with, you know, discovering who I am and my mission and purpose. And Everyone knows you originally as the money guy, the sales guy. Yeah. How do you think people perceive you now? Do you think that's changed as, as you've expanded? You know, I think, you know, I, 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 I'm fortunate enough to have, to be seeing a lot of different variations of grant, which I'm really, really happy about because in the beginning, um, look, I was just a sales guy, you know, just a sales guy. Uh, and and that, that was unfortunate for a lot of people and for myself and my family. It was a big mistake for, for me because I wasn't telling people that I was secretly buying real estate and secretly, you know, partnering with other people to run business, to create businesses. 
uh, that secretly I wanted to create massive wealth, not just sell programs. Um, and I say that because you, you can create massive wealth without selling something. You, you do that by investing, right? So I, I've been extremely limited in what I thought I was capable of doing. So, um, so the first probably 20 years was just wasted because I was trying to sell a product. I was trying to sell myself to the public. I was trying to, I was trying to get into corporations and I was so like one, um, you know, if I was a stool, I had one leg and dude, 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 every time I move, I'm tumbling, right? I needed the other legs to the stool and I, and I, and I've just, when, when we started making the transition to be something else, everybody's like, no, stay one leg. You would, you'd be shocked how many people didn't want me to go create the second and the third leg, much less 14 of them. Now I'm trying to get to hundreds of them, but, um, you know, if you stay with it, because when you go after another audience, when the comedian tries to become a serious actor, it's going to be a problem for him. When the actor tries to become the rapper, it's going to become a problem. Like, it's just very, very hard to make those transitions. I was with Will Smith, uh, not Will Smith. I was with uh, Jamie Foxx. And here's a guy that's a comedian. Serious actor, mm. romantic actor, stand-up comedian, you know, like he's done it all. A leading man uh, and now probably wants to be a businessman and a rapper, right? So he's, he's now acknowledges all those things. So, uh, yeah, I think, I, I think it's starting to change how people see me. You know, the fund manager thing is going to change everything when you, when you run a billion-dollar fund and then make it $2 billion and $5 billion and $10 billion. It's going to get the attention of Wall Street. So it's going to be a different look at me, but it's confusing for some people that are being or meeting me. Some people think I'm just a social media guy. Okay. You know, some people think uh, know me uh, from the G and E show. Some people know me as the sales guy. Some people know me as probably a huckster. And, and then you know, but once you get in, some people see me as a really hard person. Uh, most of the interviews I've done here, everybody's been very interested in my spirituality. So uh, a lot of people are starting to call me the money guy now. The, oh, you talk about money all the time. So it's fine with me, dude. It's, it's what door, you know, this, this place has got 11 rooms in it. They're all very different. So it's like, what door are you going to come in? And maybe you, you might come in that door, but not like it. Mm-hmm. Is there another room that Grant fits? Because mm-hmm. uh, I want to be more than one thing. You know, I think, I think everybody wants to be more than just, I imagine Bruce Lee wanted to be more than just you know, the karate guy. Absolutely. So um, hopefully I, I, you know, hopefully I figure out who I really am. And I, and I think everybody has the ability to be a lot of different things, Definitely. Not, not just one thing. Definitely. Talking about, um, obviously, you're expanding companies, the most recently Cardone Ventures, which is very, very interesting. That was a route I never really imagined you going down. Maybe you never imagined it yourself. And I always knew, you know, studying you over the years, the target was 1E9. Yeah, we've got to yeah. push for that bill. Yeah. Now it seems like it's gone ten x. Oh yeah, it's one e ten, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's one e ten there. Yeah. So, 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 um, yeah. Brandon Dawson came to me and said he was at our ten x growth conference. So people are like, "Why would you do this thirty five thousand person conference?" I'll just tell you, we half of what I do, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I did not know this would happen out of this any more than this trip taught me to you know, see some things and ask some questions I didn't know about. Um, Brandon Dawson was on the fourth row. I don't know Brandon Mm -hmm. at the time. He's friends with John Maxwell. His wife was introduced to us through the G&E show, Uh, not uh, 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 Brandon's fiance. Mm -hmm. And she says, hey, Brandon, you got to watch this guy, Grant Cardone, dude. This guy is like, he's a freaking... He's, he's like, unlike anything I've ever seen in my life. Oh, yeah, 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 whatever, I know, you know. She's like, no, you need to read the book. You need to read the 10X rule. No, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever, right. She, he wasn't taking her serious. Now, the, the, again, the gateway to him, to Brandon, was through the wife who saw the G&E show, the relationship show. Well, he got turned on to the 10X rule, and so he's like, fuck, this is the guy. Br- Brandon, uh, Brandon bought two diamond tickets to the 10X Growth Conference, one for him, one for his wife. His wife says, all I want for Christmas is a diamond seat to that conference. I don't want anything else. Don't give me anything else. And you know, they're dripping in paddocks and all this stuff, right? So they come, Brandon get, walks in the room and looks around and says, there's 35,000 people here. Who is this guy? 
Who does this? He's like, there's 35,000 people in here. There's got to be 3,000 businesses that need a lift. That's where Cardone Ventures came from. So we're not trying to sell something to, to, to the people. There's probably 300 qualified out of that 35,000 that we think that we could do business with and join a venture. Company is doing 20 million or 2 million or, and, and wants to go to 20 or 20 and wants to go to 200. We, we, we'll be there to partner with them, to help them, to make introductions, to give them some guidance, to mentor them, and then we get a piece of the, the lift. That's awesome. Could be big. Awesome. Could be a, it could be a billion dollar play. Because I'd like to put like fifty or sixty companies together, nice. and then take it and sell the whole the whole bundle. That's amazing. That is amazing. That's amazing. You're going wide. So, is there a re retirement plan for Grant Cardone? Because it's like, mm -hmm. as a year, every year goes by and you get a, a year older. Yeah. It's like you're doing more yeah. and you're doing more yeah. and you keep pushing. Which is admirable. Yeah, yeah, you just you don't you don't know what you can do until you do it, man. Like, and this is proven out in athletics. It's it, it proved out in the arts. Uh, you know, you don't know what you can do until you do it. And so, you know, once once I lift a little more weight, I'm like, wow, I can do that. I didn't think I could do that much weight, and then I did it. Mm -hmm. You know, so once you get some legs underneath you, I, I hadn't worked my legs out in 30 years. <laughs> You know, made a comment about it one day, and everybody's like, "Did he just say he never works his legs?" I'm like, yeah, dude, I didn't, I didn't know to work them. <laughs> like, I didn't know. But once you work them, then you can go work them again. And once you do something, you can do more. You find out you can do more. And once you start doing enough stuff, you find out, hey, man, I'm not lazy. You know, and 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 um, I can do more. And I'm not going to be overwhelmed, like everybody tells you. Everybody says, "Do you look more stress free now?" than when you had less going on. Mm -hmm. So when people see the schedule, they're like, how do you do all that? Uh, we, we did, we, bought, we contracted $426 million worth of real estate deals in the last five days. Travel, 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 travel. I'm, I'm, I'm on the phone every day. I'm in the pool in th Thailand working deals, looking at the view. It doesn't matter where you are today. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, dude, the more I do, the more I realize I can do more, you know. Wait, so I'm in there looking at a, a 319, an Airbus 319 right now. I'm like, shit, we need a bigger plane. <laughs> Swear to God. Yeah, I, I, can, I can believe it. I'm I like, I want you guys rolling with us. I, well, I want to get a jet so you can roll on my jet. I like that <laughs> idea even better. It was right. I like that idea even better. <laughs> I want to buy you jet fuel. That's the I love that. I love so, that. you know, you as a public figure have always spoken about money very openly. And, and success, I think, completely different to any other influencer in the space. Very openly. You know, you, you say, I'm trying to avoid taxes. You don't hear any other successful yeah. influencers really talk that openly about this kind of stuff. Yeah. Do you think that's because this is what people really need to know and hear about? Like, yeah, to totally. Like, you know, it's, it's what all the big guys, the, 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 the public gangsters all don't pay taxes. Mm. Apple, Netflix, um, the banks, none of these people pay, you know? So, so, you know, look, I want to stack the deal in my favor. You know, I, I don't like the cards I've been dealt. So I'm going to check, I'm going to figure out, okay, who's winning at this game. And if you want to know who's winning at the game, you can sit and bitch about it. You can bitch about Theresa May and Brexit and the next guy and the next batch. They're, they're all, these are all puppets being run by a system of gangsters and the gangsters know what the rules are. So if you don't know what the rules are, shame on you. Totally agree. Like a guy told me once, he's like, I don't like to read books. So what? You don't like to read them, dude. All the data you want in the universe is in a book. Mm -hmm. It's in a book. It's somewhere. And so, but you can't, the problem, and I say this, like, I, I say this and I know it's not going to help anybody, but you, if you listen to me and you flip off and you listen to, I could just start listing five or six guys. You're, gonna, you're not going to do anything. It's impossible to listen to me and these five or six people I'm thinking about. Because we, we conflict. They, we conflict. We're, we're all contemporaries. We are all you know, seem to be successful. Seem to be successful, whatever that means. Um, we, we all seem to have it going on. But the data will conflict. And, 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 and this is what creates conflict for people to do anything. Um, so... Yeah, dude, the money thing, you got to have money, man. You know, these five or six contemporaries, they can't do this strip I just did. 
I know guys that have as much money as I have. They can't do this trip because they got nobody to take it with, you know, or, or they're tied to some schedule that they can't get out of and they can't walk away from, from this, the commitment, the contract. So that's not freedom. Uh, we, we flew into to, to Mykonos and I didn't like the, the place we were staying at. I, I booked it. I'd already paid for it four, day, four or five days. And I walked in and said, I don't want this place. And the guy's like, well, Mr. Cardone, you already paid. I said, I, I don't care if I paid. I don't want it. Here's the place I want. Call him up. Here's the phone number. Tell him I want his place. Um, I, made, I, made, I made a decision to rent this place. I'll, I'll worry about getting my money back later, but I'm not staying here just because I paid for it. That's freedom, dude. Absolutely. Like, like, I told a guy that story, and he's like, man, I knew a guy and a girl. You guys can relate to this as a couple. They hated each other. They were going to the Maldives. They had a trip planned to the Maldives. They decided they hated each other, that they couldn't be together. And because they paid for the trip, they still went on it, even though they hated each other's fucking guts. Oh, man. Can you imagine? That's I'm crazy. like, guys, you already spent the money. The money is gone. You going there for four or five days just because you paid for it already. The money's already lost, but people don't think like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And so, so I, I, I have acted like that before, by the way. You know, I bought stuff. I, I, I remember some clothes I bought and it didn't fit, but I wouldn't throw them away. Like, they don't fit. They look terrible on me. I'm not sure about them. I can't give them back. I tried that. They won't take them back, but I'm not, I'm not getting rid of them because I bought them. So I already lost the money. It's so stupid. When it comes to money, people get like so stupid. Absolutely. I a hundred percent agree. People they, really they, struggle. They'll talk about you guys spending money with me, which is tax deductible potential for gain. You could make connections. Have y'all done better since you spent it with me? We're sitting here with you. Huh? That's right. We're sitting here with you now. Yeah. This is a very, really valuable connection. Yeah, but how's your business done? We got a franchisee from being on stage at 10X. Yeah. I put you in front of 35,000 people, yeah. right? So, uh, I mean, it cost me 10 million to put that, that stage there. What did it, it, it cost you? 30 grand. 30 grand. You paid 30 grand, I paid 10 million. I'd say you got a pretty good deal there. Absolutely. Um, so, people would say, you spent $30,000 ridiculous but they'll put thirty thousand dollars on a house mm. that there's no way they're, they're, they'll buy they'll spend 30 grand on a car they'll send spend thirty thousand to send a kid to school one year that doesn't even want to go to school mm. absolutely and it, to be fair when you really sit down and think about it, it's complete logic but people still do it yeah it's just like madness yeah yeah you know talking about your spirituality mm -hmm. you've recently done an interview when you was last in london and it blew up. Yeah, you know, yeah. There was a lot of attention on that oh, interview. I, I, I didn't follow yeah, it. There yeah. was? There was a lot of attention on the, on the, on the second part of the interview. Uh -huh. And, you know, a lot of people wanted to know more about your spirituality, your religious beliefs. Yeah. And you follow Scientology, yeah. you know, and you've, you've, you've spoke about it on camera now quite freely and you're very comfortable with it. Do you feel that you're kind of a patron for Scientology because a lot of people see it as a very peculiar religion that they maybe have strange habits yeah. and things like that. And now they see someone like you. Yeah, yeah. they have strange habits. Yeah. The, pe the people that go there get better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the strangest habit on the planet right now. When I, when I researched a lot about it, it was yeah. like, well, it's a place where you go for self-improvement courses. Yeah, totally, totally. So, so look, Scientology is, um, the thing that drew me to Scientology, first of all, <laughs> was that it, it seemed to me two things that, that was interesting to me. The amount of um, controversy and the tabloids constantly following this church. I didn't even know what it was, that it was a church or a religion. I, I didn't really know what they did. And I, I, you know, I'd heard Tom Cruise was there and John Travolta. And then, then, then the other thing is, was the number of successful people that were studying or doing courses at the Church of Scientology. And when I say the successful people, the controversy, first of all, interests me because where there's controversy, I have always found that there, there's another side that's not being another side of the story that's not being told. It's one of the reasons I'm so interested in the Middle East. OK, I, you know, everybody tell me, oh, you can't go to the Middle East. You can't go here. You can't go there. I said, well, oh my God, I know there's something there for me. Right. Because of this, the, the fake news. So the first thing was the controversy and the fake news, uh, which tremendous amount of fake stuff about the, the Church of Scientology. But the second thing was all these successful people. I'm not talking about Tom Cruise and John Travolta. I'm talking about businessmen that you don't know that are studying the Church of Scientology's L. Ron Hubbard's courses 
and these people are multi-billionaires, okay? These people are some of the best business people I have ever met on the planet. Three of them I'm thinking of right now. It's not for me to use their names, but um, the first Scientologist I did meet, not a billionaire, he was the number one bond trader. He was married to a girl I dated. He was the number one bond trader in, in the United States of America studying Scientology. And he said that Scientology was the reason he was the number one bond trader. The guy was making millions of dollars. That's all I knew about Scientology. It was controversial. And this guy, Peter, was a Scientologist. This is when I was 30 years old, 35 years old. And he was a Scientologist and he was making all this money. I never, I didn't know anybody making this much money. I walked in his kitchen one day and opened up the, the, the cabinets. The, the storage room was bigger than my whole kitchen. And he had, he had food and water for months, man. <laughs> And I was like, who is this dude? He's the number one bond trader, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, yeah, but how did he get here? Oh, he's a Scientologist. He studies Scientology. I said, dude, I want to study some of this Scientology. Because I want my, my, my damn, my, my, my uh, I wasn't prepared. I had a refrigerator that couldn't hold enough food for three days. This guy had food for months. <clears throat> and so then I started doing courses uh, when I was 45 years old. I, there was a, uh, I lived in a town where they had a church, and I started doing courses. And that was, I guess, 15 years ago. And if you look at the trajectory of my, my career, my finances, my life, my expansion, you're going to see, you know, you're going to see a very interesting parallel between me doing well. I was doing well before I went to the church, without a doubt. But I wasn't doing like, I wasn't doing what I'm doing today. I mean, that, 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 the, the, these courses, every time I do a course, everything in my life just spikes upward. So that's what they don't tell you in the tabloids. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you what the courses are, what they do for people, how to improve some marriages. Um, why, why do I have so much vitality and, and, and why am I so comfortable being Grant Cardone? Th those, those, are, those are things that make me a better Catholic. I was brought up Catholic. I still, I believe in God. See, that's what the tabloids say. Scientologists don't believe in God. That's not even true. God's all over these writings. So um, I'm not only a better Catholic, I'm a better human being. I'm a good father. I know how to, I know how to create time. Magic. How do you create time? So you go from being in $400 million worth of deals to being sensitive enough with a 10-year-old in the period of the same 30 minutes. Because I'm doing the deals and I got the 10-year-old with me. And then how do I move to a marriage? How do you do that? that? That trick, you know, how do you control things from a distance? These are courses that you can do, you know? How do you handle stress? How do you eliminate stress from your life and not experience it, no matter how big the deal is, right? How do you detect good people and bad people? These are all skills that people have to have, and, and that's what the church teaches. And you can be a Baptist, a Mormon, a Buddhist, Agnostic, atheist, communist, Democrat, Republican, confused, succeeding, not succeeding. They're not going to ask you to change anything. You know, they're just going to be like, here's the course. You want to do it, not do it. Wow. So it's been, it's been amazing for me. That's phenomenal to hear. That's phenomenal to hear. And I think it's a testament to what the church does and the courses they provide. Because like you said, you're, you're living proof of it. Dude, I, I, like I, I did a course there for uh, 40 bucks. It was on statistics, and that, that course, there's a green book, and I don't go anywhere without that green book. That, that green book is my Bible. I know what I'm supposed to do at all times, right? When things are working, I know I go in that book, and I know what I'm supposed to do. It tells me exactly what I should be doing right then. Things go down. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. It could be in my physical life. I, I started working out uh, about, uh, I guess, 11 months ago. It was because of the information in that book. My, my body was starting to break down. So I put my body on a graph. And basically, I'm like, okay, what have I been doing with my body? Nothing. I was in non-existence. As a spiritual being, I was in non-existence with my physical unit. And the physical unit was starting to scream. Ankles hurting, knees hurting, hips hurting, uh, lower back bothering me. All these things, they're like, yeah, you're just getting old. No, dude, I was out of communication. I was non-existent with my body. The graph went literally vertically down. A downward graph like that means I have no attention on that particular thing, right? And so the book tells you what to do to get back into communication with that thing you want so you can raise a graph, any graph, 
physical, marriage, money, time, employees. I had uh, four employees uh, 15 years ago. We have, we'll, we'll probably crack 400 employees this year across all the businesses. So you can't buy time with four employees. You can with 400. And, 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 and then, then the question is, once you got the data, then you're like, yeah, but do you have the courage? So the, the, I've done courses there on how to eliminate fear from my life so I can actually lean into the opportunity, spend the money. So, man, I just can't. Like, I'm not here to promote them. I, I, I don't talk about them unless somebody brings it up. I'm not here. The, the Church of Scientology is like, uh, they're, they're expanding without my help. So um, I'm just a testament to like, the court, when, when applied, apply the data, and my life got better. That's all I know. I, w- I wouldn't have Elena if it wasn't for it. I wouldn't be in a marriage if it wasn't for that. I couldn't keep a relationship. And then when I did, I always picked the wrong person, dude. That's that course I did on picking people, right? Like I kept picking the hot chick that was a freaking psycho. <laughs> <laughs> and the sex was great. But do, do we, we, you know... The, the, she, she couldn't even make the pancakes, right? Uh, or we couldn't, we couldn't enjoy the pancakes together. If, she, if the sex was good and the pancake, pancakes, we, we couldn't enjoy ourselves together. Like, the only thing that was good was the sex. And so um, I figured, I had that part figured out. I just didn't have the, how are we going to have kids together? Because right now we're just going to kill each other. So, like, every single area of my life, from my physical well-being, my stress, getting rid of stress, getting rid of fear, having confidence to put on an event with 35,000 people. Dude, to put, to put an event on, to spend $10 million and not know if anybody's going to show up, that is not, that's one of the most difficult things I've ever done in my life. Because up until Thursday night, I mean, I think you guys probably thought, dude, you, probably, you were probably even wondering, dude, is he going to sell the place out? I think everyone was. Everyone, they, everyone knew he was good, but, they, but there was like 35,000 people is a lot of people there's a lot of people and it's it's that whole thing right like the uh was it the, the the four minute mile if it's never been done before like can he really do it i'm sure everyone now Dude, thursday night okay i did an audit on the tickets sold and i'm like guys come on how many tickets have we really sold but they told me 35 something i'm like okay do another audit thursday night i had done like three audits i still was like, they no way. This place is going to be empty tomorrow. Mm. So, uh, you know, uh, f- Friday was almost to capacity. Saturday had more people and Sunday had even more people. Mm. So then it's like, okay, I got them here. Will they stay? So, you know, the, 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 the not certain doesn't mean just because you start getting rid of f- fear and stress doesn't mean you're certain about everything. I'd never done it before. Why, why would I be certain about it? Right. So there's that learning those things and having the confidence, man, to, to stroke a check that big mm-hmm. and say, not just the money, because at some point it's not about the money. Now it's about, I'm going to be embarrassed. <laughs> you know, it's like having a party, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and you're like, is anybody going to show up for my party? <laughs> yeah. You did an amazing job. Yeah, thanks. You, did an amazing you job. guys were great there. No, we, 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 I think so many people um, came away with at least one thing from that event yeah. that's all you need right whether you're in the dude if all you came out back with is the guy filled the room mm-hmm. that that by itself yeah mm-hmm. i was happy if people walked in and just walked in and says i can do anything mm-hmm. you know if that if people walk in and say if he did this i can do anything we're good everybody got their money's worth mm-hmm. you created a movement because it made everyone unite Pe- where people don't talk together where everyone's like 10x 10x family you know, all around the UK, in, in Europe, we're talking to everyone because of the yeah, next, yeah, yeah. where we wouldn't talk to each other. I mean, British people are different to Americans. Like, yeah, yeah. Brits don't oh, but once you have that 10x thing, yeah. everyone's like, it's like family. they see the hat. Dude, dude, like dude, dude you, right. You go anywhere in the world, dude, and you can say, dude, I'm a 10x person. And they're like, you're family yeah, then. That's it. Like, it, it is a, yeah. cre- it, is a well, it was an idea mm. that has been followed up with enough agreement. Mm. That, that it becomes real to people and people start thinking about expansion. Like, you don't even really have to explain 10x to anybody. They're like, okay, I get it. It's a multiplier. Yeah. Because of 10x, we actually accepted a franchisee in Chicago as easier than we would. We have pro- yes. procedures uh-huh. over here, 16 steps. Because of 10x, we were like, just we, 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 we under, They understand it. the mindset. They know yeah, what yeah, the game yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why. And it's, it's the best thing. And I can't wait. 
head it for the growth come for. Yeah, mm. yeah. Oh, that's going to be it's awesome. Gonna sell out. Yeah. It's going to be it's awesome. Yeah. You're, you're, you said before in a previous interview, you're a spiritual being in a human yeah, vessel physical, or in, in a, a physical. physical body. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what's your opinion on death and birth? And uh, yeah, that, that's great, man. I love that, man. I, see, I wish people would took more interest in this. But so I believe, I believe, I, I have been wondering this question since I was. I think I was six years old in a, in a Catholic church and, you know, they're reading the scripture and it's all about, you know, damnation and you're going to hell. And look, I very much believe in God, but I do not believe I don't believe that I just die and become I go to some hell spot and hang out at some high temperature for the next, uh, you know, 10,000 years or whatever. You know, I just, I, I just don't, it's just, it was hard for me to conceive that that's all I am. And even at six, I would have been like, dude, I'd already created enough sins by six. I'm like, shit, I'm done. <laughs> you know, so uh, uh, by 16, I was like, well, there's no coming back for me. I mean, um, so, you know, I believe that I am an immortal being. And, and, and I believe that's why when I go places, like and I'm in Dubai and I'm like, I feel something here, man. Like, like, there's just places I go where I feel something. Like, I, I've been here, dude. I've been here. I played this game before. I know the, I know this, the landscape here. Or I'm terrified of it, which would indicate why. You know, people are scared of heights. Why? Why? You ever fell off anything? No, no never fell. Nothing's ever happened to you regarding heights. But I'm terrified of them. So, so those are all indication, indications to me that, like, you know, r real estate, for example. Okay, I, I have a connection with real estate that is... It is beyond anything of this world as we know it. It, it, it is so ancient in me. Uh, you, you know, I can't, I can't talk about it. Like, I'm doing a real estate conference tomorrow, right? I'm not going to tell them, hey, dude, I'm connected to some freaking intelligence that's 10,000 years old, maybe even older, might be 10 million years old. Um, but I know that I have some gift. I, this didn't come from uh, uh, someone else. It came because of experiences I've had on my track of life um, that, that, that entitles me to some data or some genius or some access. Uh, you know, this is the, the young, the, what, are the, what do they call the kids that are, they know piano and um, wh well, what's the word? Uh, the, well, no, the, gifted? Yeah, they're gifted, but they're, they're called uh, prodig prodigies. Prodigy. Prodigies, right? The kid that knows, I don't know, the, the, the kid knows something that nobody, else, the parents don't know it. The, the kid all of a sudden has access to some data. Well, where did that come from, man? And, and I think that if you take that sword right now and cut my hand off, am I still me? I don't mean Grant, because it would be Grant with one less hand, but I'm still Grant. I mean, I'm still me. Mm. Right. If you if you if somebody if the federal if the government came uh, came in and robbed my name from me, my identity, Grant Cardone, three twenty one fifty eight passport, took all that from me. Am I still me? I'm still me, dude. If you take both my arms off, I'm still me. Right. If you get rid of my entire body. Why would I think the body's any different than my hand? And so uh, I'm not trying to press this on or sell this to anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm sold on it. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I've lived many times. Without question, not even like, no, I have, know who I've been, where I've been, what I did, because I've looked, you know, I've taken a look. Now, you guys can say I'm crazy, but my bank account doesn't say I'm crazy. <laughs> you know, I get a loan, I get a loan, I bought, you know, the banks will lend me money. Mm -hmm. So what do you believe in? And this isn't a faith thing I have. This is, I'm not like under somebody's doctrine. Um, I'm, I'm under me spending time taking a look at who I am and what happens. Uh, and, you know, the, the old adage that when I was growing up is you can't know everything. And when the first time I ever heard that, I'm like, I don't think that's true. I think you can know everything if you look. But how can you know anything if you won't even look? So you believe in reincarnation? Yes, I do. And do you think you come back in the human form? Or do you, you know? You know, definitely. I'm not coming back as a monkey. <laughs> I mean, I'm not coming back as a, a cat. I'm coming back as a, as a human. And you, you in this form, yeah. I was going to say in this form with the jet and the portfolio and maybe, maybe not. Maybe I find out, dude, all that was stupid. 
You know, what if we find out, dude, all that was stupid. It's just stuff. You know. So the, I remember seeing you on stage and we were at the front row. J Jet, the, let me just interrupt you, but jets are not a very smart way to move around the planet. There would be much better ways to move. I mean, why can't we move these, these lights that we, ha we need? You know, why, why do we need all these lights? Why can't we emanate our own light? Why do I have to plug into something? Dude, why do, why, why do I need, why does a spiritual being, like this is the thing that like, just like, just like, this is when I become, oh my God, what can I do? See, when I'm, if I'm immortal, then you can't do anything to me. I can take risks that you could never take. I, these guys are out there pitching the one life thing. You got one life. It's one life. You got one life. Dude, one life is a problem. If you have a thousand lives, you can take some risk that you wouldn't normally take. Like you start thinking about, hey, I want to change things because I'm coming back. If you got one life, there's no reason to make a contribution, right? So, so the, the, the idea that I have to pick up a phone to call Ryan into the room makes me dependent upon some device rather than saying, dude, I'm going to call Ryan into the room without screaming, without yelling, without the telephone. I'm going to communicate. I'm going to get a straight line jacked into him, you know, and he, 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 he it's quiet enough in his universe and quiet enough in mine. We can connect. I, I like that idea that, that I can do that. You know, I, I, I know that in Miami, I can be in my office in Miami and I can know what's going on in the sales room. And dude, there's like seven walls between me and that room. Right. I, I'll walk in there. Hey, guys. OK, who are you having a problem with right now? I, 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 I can sense. Now, I know I know you guys watching and be like, this fucking guy is nuts. All right. OK, so, you know, you said that about you said that about uh, Tom Brady, too, that he, there's no way he could win six rings. But he did. You know, you said Floyd Mayweather couldn't win 50 fights, but he did. You know, somebody said you couldn't man couldn't fly, but he did. So, you know, they, Galileo said that the, 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 the earth was not the center of the universe and they, they put him in prison for it. So, 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 so these, you know, we've been wrong as humans. The world is flat, all that stuff. We've been wrong, you know, a lot about who we are. And I, I would expect that we're probably wrong about a whole bunch of other stuff, including myself, that, that I'm wrong about a whole bunch of other limitations. So seeing you in GrowthCon 3 and you said, you made a bold statement. You said it was the, the most happiest time we've ever yeah, been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. You know, it was amazing. Yeah. What can you do to top that off, to get to that level of happiness, if not achieve more? Yeah, so that Saturday night, if you weren't there, I made a comment, or Sunday, I said that last night was the single mo happiest moment of my entire life. Because I really felt like, okay, we did it. The people are happy. We didn't just fill the place up. I had a sense of gratitude from the audience that I had exchanged with them in abundance. I'm sure there were some people that weren't happy. We had problems, we had whatever. But uh, 35,000 people, you're gonna have some issues, right? So, um, you know, I offered a, two t-shirts for five bucks or something. Here's one of the problems that was created. And so many people went to the, to, to the stores for the two for five that you know it became a police problem it became police fire department problem people were upset about it people wanted their money back because they they you know, blah 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 so but overall dude I, I that night i was like this is the happiest moment of life i mean everything that i've ever done in my whole life i was like this is i'm so happy i'm so happy because they're happy and so how do i top that I, i'm not i don't know that i need to top it i just need to keep doing things where i give people more than they gave me and I feel like at that event, I gave people more than they gave me. And maybe one vehicle that can do that is, you know, Cardone Capital. I mean, the target for Cardone Capital is that I think we sent out $1.4 million last month, maybe 1.3 to our investors. We do that every month. So we're on track for 16 million. I want that to be 16 million a month that I send out to families. And then I want to get that to 50 million a month. And then I want to get it to 100. And I want to get it so big that Goldman Sachs and Blackstone and Barclays and that I want them to all know my name. This guy gives people money, sends people every money every month that used to go through the banks because the bank didn't send you any money. 
So I know the banks aren't sending you guys money. They keep your money. They sit on it. They give it out to other people. They give it out to the rich people. So I'm going to do a Robin Hood. I'm going to pull a Robin Hood on fucking Wall Street. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put this in great assets, and then we're going we're gonna to distribute wealth to people that trust me enough to get involved. We're going to distribute that monthly passive income until I have thousands of families that receive more passive income from me than they do earned income from where they work. That would make me really happy. I, I've really studied your model really hard, and it's very, very interesting because, again, you're the only speaker, influencer, coach, however you perceive yourself, to actually pay his supporters. Yeah. No one else is doing it. But obviously they have to go through the transition, they have to go through the cycle. It could be the 17 year old first reading the book, yeah, yeah. jumping onto Cardone University for 100 yeah. bucks a month. Yeah, guys are bragging about not selling you anything. I'm like, dude, I wanna give you money. I wanna send you money back. Mm. Dude, don't, don't brag about you, not sp you didn't spend money with a guy. Brag about I'm getting money from a guy. You know, that, you want to you create an allegiance. I want to create an allegiance of people that love me and will fight for me. How do you do that? Pay them. <laughs> you know, who's the best king? The one that takes care of you. So, so I want to be, I want the Muslims praying for me. I want the Jewish people praying for me. I want the confused Arabs praying for me. I want everybody, dude, everybody that prays to anybody. Any, I, I, I just want to take a shot at every God. Okay, the Baptists, the, the, like pray pray for Grant. Put him up on the mantle in your living room. Okay. Make sure he's all right. Why? Because I send that family money every month. And I think that would be a cool thing. Absolutely. Grant, really appreciate your time. You guys are awesome. So anytime I'll do this, anytime with you Thank guys. You, so you know, the, 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 it's really hard to do this stuff, but, but you guys are so special. Really, really appreciate you. Appreciate what you're doing for so many people. Love your business model. Thank you. And, and, and uh, anything I can do for you, all right? We want to see you in the Philippines. Okay, yeah, I, we want to go there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.